Women on Wealth is proudly sponsored by First for Women. Celebrating leading women. of female students at tertiary institutions continues to grow at a faster pace than male students. But in Africa, this trend is not held. This is Women and Wealth, and I'm Nozi Pombanjo. Tonight, we take a look at tertiary education for women in Africa. We take a lesson from the University of Botswana's Deputy Vice Chancellor, Zimbabwe's Women's University in Africa Vice Chancellor, and the Regional Managing Director of Duke Corporate Education in South Africa. Now, according to UNESCO, across Sub-Saharan Africa, there are only about 62 female students enrolled in higher education for every 100 male students. In countries like Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Guinea, the picture is far bleaker. However, there are women hard at work trying to change this. I sat down with the University of Botswana's Deputy Vice Chancellor, that's Professor Lydia Nyatsi Salashando, at ITC Women's Pioneer Summit to find out how education can help to bridge the inequality gap for women on the continent. Well, education um, is perhaps the most critical uh, thing or ele element in life that empowers. You know, education, not just the classroom education, but education starts from the cradle to the grave. And therefore, it is important that we understand it, education in its totality. And therefore, empowering the mind, how the mind works, how you perceive the world, how you perceive yourself, how you find yourself in that world functioning mm. is what determines your success in life. Mm. And therefore, um, education empowers uh, women and uh, everybody to find their, their place in, in life. And therefore, when you talk about inequalities, it is the inequality created by how we perceive ourselves from the beginning. I'm going to be a girl. I'm then going to be get married and then I'm going to uh, have children. And, and that mindset is not saying, I'm not going, I'm going to, I'm a lady, I'm going to be a businesswoman, I'm going to be in the uh, business world, I'm going to uh, make the, the greatest uh, name for myself in business. So you see the two mindsets determine how you uh, fair in, in life. But it also sounds like, Prof, that we need to change some of these mindsets right from the household and the family unit. That's w right. Where do universities then fit into that equation? Because one would think that your role is far removed from the actual family unit. The, the university, as I said, education never stops. It starts from the cradle to the grave. And therefore, the university, um, as an intellectual exercise that does research, and creates knowledge and interprets knowledge and makes it accessible to everybody it has to find itself playing a major role in, in, in educating women about those mindsets and unlearning and relearning the new trends of thinking. The Women's University in Africa, based in Zimbabwe, targets mature female students between the ages of 26 and 71. I spoke to Vice Chancellor Professor Hope Sadza to find out why they decided to open an institution for women in this particular age bracket. The younger ones can still go to the a local university and they can go anywhere, they can travel, but this woman has got three children. This woman is a single parent. This woman hasn't got money, so she needs to look after the children, go to work and go to school. So she's very different. The reason why she didn't go to university is there was no access, there was no uh, role model, because she, there was nobody next door. They were all nurses and teachers, so that's all she ended up. Now she realizes the world 
needs educated people. Mm -hmm. And she's not going to be pro uh, promoted if she remains with five years of secondary. Yeah, this is why I opened it. I opened it for those women who missed out when they were young. Mm -hmm. Are they going to die without a degree just because they can't go to University of Pretoria or University of Stellenbosch? What does this mean for your business model? Your target market is quite different mm -hmm. um, and you're taking into cognizance all the challenges that these women are coming into the institution with. Does this change the way you offer the, the educational degrees compared to other universities? In terms of time, because we have, for teachers who want to get a degree, we say during the holidays you come to school. For that woman who's working and she cannot leave the job to come to school, we say come from five to seven. It's a user-friendly university. And if you are not working, you can come in the morning from eight to four o'clock. And your children, you can, if you've got children, you can put them in the crash so to be looked after. So we are saying there is a woman out there who might not go to University of Stellenbosch because she can't leave Zimbabwe. And the woman in uh, Namibia who wants to come, when we are saying, we are looking at innovative ways of presenting this education. For Zambia, what we've done, the first semester they come to Zimbabwe mm -hmm. to do the first semester. The second semester, we've signed an agreement with the Invest of Zambia. They go to school in Zambia. So they can afford three months and then they come, keep yeah. on coming and going. So this is the beauty of this university. They say that the best way to judge a university is by looking at its alumni. Um, looking at your alumni, are there women that you've produced through the university in the past 12 years that you say, this is a reflection of the good work that we're doing? Thank you very much for asking that. The vice president of the country went to this university. She was already a minister, she did not have a degree, and as you know, Zimbabwe is very educated. Our cabinet is second to, to Germany in terms of the people who have got degrees. So she was sitting there with four years of secondary education. And she said, I was not looked at as if I knew what I was saying, although I had the brains. And I said, come to the university. And she said, I've got no time. I said, you have time. From five to seven, what do you do? You mean to tell me you start cooking from five to seven? And she came. <laughs> Less than 30% of MBA students in South Africa are women. Earlier I sat down with Duke CE's Regional Managing Director, Sharma Chetty, to find out how this number can be boosted and what exactly the concept of executive education means to South Africa's women. I think executive education is actually customized education. It is not around one size fits all. It's around making sure whatever programs it is, it is linked to a business outcome. It gives women the ability to actually apply the learnings back into the workplace. Mm. Because often, you know, you have individuals that go onto a program and they can't really apply their skills back into the workplace. So through Duke's year, you are taking on a a range of different clients, often in the form of corporates and groups who are taking on these executive education programs. What do the numbers look like when it comes to women? Are we underrepresented or are we overrepresented? Well, without doubt, you know, especially on, on the senior level, women are underrepresented. You know, there is definitely, you could see the representation of women on boards in, in most companies. And, you know, al although organizations are taking a lot of strides to improve their representation of women uh, onto programs, but certainly there still needs a lot of work that needs to be done. And where do you find them, uh, Shaman? Because there's always this view that women will gravitate towards the softer skills. Are we reinforcing that by studying things that are aligned with the softer skills? Well, I think there's a combination of both that's important, you know, so mm. uh, meaning that women are wanting to excel in terms of what they do. They're wanting to increase the mobility in certain, you know, specialization or, or the opportunity to do more. But um, in terms of that is that women 
are wanting a combination of the specialization skills as well as the soft skills because you really need both to succeed in the workplace. It's not around having one versus the other, but what actually gives you the competitive advantage to compete in the workplace? Are we taking up those uh, programs though that are giving us the competitive advantage? Absolutely. You know, you're seeing women that are wanting to excel, women that are feeling very strongly that I want to actually compete in, in, an, in, in a new world. I want to actually compete in, you know, into the C-suite as well. Or I want to actually make a change in terms of my career, in terms of what I have done in a spe specialization route versus a more genetic route. That can give me the opportunity to be a CEO as an example. Yes, absolutely. Maybe let's also just talk about the feedback that you get from your alumni. Um, there's always big question marks about the value of an MBA. Um, is it really opening up doors for women? An MBA in particular? Well, you know, there, there's a, that's an interesting question. There's a lot of women that actually got to the top without an MBA, mm. right? So, that, you know, and, and the stats speak for itself. The women are doing MBAs to increase the mobility in, and give them the opportunity to participate in more than they had done previously. So instead of actually specializing in one area, they have the opportunity to participate in a larger ecosystem in business. The, than they have done before. Mm. So it gives them the opportunity to network, the opportunity to learn new skills, and also to actually uh, work or, or, or actually participate with men in the classroom because I think it, there's a combination of having men that instead of not just having you know only women in, mm. to participate in the classroom. What about the broader support environment? I mean, I think having an MBA is one example of executive education is one tool that you can arm yourself with. What do you think is needed in addition to this for women to really um, you know knock the the ball out the ball ballpark when it comes to uh, being players in the C-suite? I think it's women need more than just an MBA uh, and MBA certainly helps but I think they also need support mechanisms mm. so making making sure they have mentoring coaching as part of the, the career development because those you know there are multiple things that contribute to give you uh, a larger perspective in how to actually compete in in, in, in a c-suite mm. so I don't think it's around just having one but it's actually having multiple tools and tool sets and mm. capabilities to operate in that in that environment. That's all for this week's episode of Women on Wealth. Be sure though to pick up a copy of this Sunday City Press to find out more about another winning woman, South Africa's first deaf chartered accountant and friend of the show, Kashvira Chandrathrit. Remember that we would like to hear from you, so keep talking to us on Twitter. That's by following me at Nozi Pombandra. And don't forget that the show's hashtag is WOW410. We want to know who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered.